Joining me from Washington to discuss this more is Yuval Weber at Marine Corps University. He's the Brent Chair of Russian Military and Political Strategy. At UVO, um, President Alexander Lukashenko has been in power for, what, 26 years? Mm. And results of elections in the past have been questioned before, but it seems this time it just looks different and it feels different, doesn't it? For sure. So over the past, so this is his sixth uh, election. And what was different from this time to the last couple is a number of short and long-term things all coming to a head. The economy has really been in stagnation for the last couple of years, as Russia has decreased the amount of aid that it gives to Belarus in terms of uh, cheap energy. Then there was the issue with COVID-19, which is not just an economic downturn like many places, but President Lukashenko really dismissed it, uh, saying that people just need to play more hockey, drink more vodka, you know, take more steam baths, and really not taking it very seriously including not funding the, the medical services of Belarus. So when it came to all the opposition candidates that wanted to run, uh, they're, uh, they're the three serious ones you know, who didn't come from within the government were all arrested or forced to flee the country. So in their place, their various wives and campaign managers uh, came up with an opposition platform that had really just one demand, which was to... Uh, basically rerun the election with all the people that had been forced out being allowed to run. So when Lukashenko then had the election and came out with 80% uh, with of the vote, it was clear that his real level of support was nowhere close. Um, and that's what sort of brought it all together, people not being respected and then sort of people just being angry about the process altogether. And these protests uh, really have turned violent. Some of these people who were arrested talk about being uh, tortured, beaten, and abused. Is there a possibility of dialogue at this point? Uh, what is the solution? Right, so at the, Lukashenko went with a lot of violence quickly, but not enough to really sort of crush the protests altogether. And so when people started to be released from jails, um, both official and unofficial detention centers, they had all these terrible injuries. And the news coverage in Belarus and in Russia has truly been awful. And so at that point, people don't believe that he's really serious about engaging in dialogue. So what Lukashenko actually did, perhaps inadvertently, is make any attempt at reaching out to his, uh, to his opponents not seem very sincere. And more to the point, the... Uh, Svetlana Tikhonovskaya, whom you mentioned at the top of the hour, uh, she has been forced from Belarus after um, being detained at the Central uh, Election Commission uh, into neighboring Lithuania. So, so she has called for people to organize against Lukashenko from abroad. Well, can she really do that, Yuval, effectively, while you're in Lithuania, asking people to go ahead and protest and put their lives at risk? So that's, that's really what we have a, a situation of dual power. The dual power is she's abroad, and she, we'll see over the next week whether all the various protesters on the street, which are on the street in a sense for her, can work with the local mayors, local police, everyone who's really outside of the Lukashenko uh, government in order to press their case that she is the person that Lukashenko needs to deal with not basically the people on the street themselves, whom you can always send more riot police, more troops uh, against. What's Russia's position in all this? It seems like they're keeping their options open. Right, I'm sure Putin is in, uh, is in you know, Moscow thinking, it's hard to get good help these days. Um, because at this point, Russia's big sort of, they want stability. They want someone who can really take care of the situation, and Lukashenko is showing that he is not able to do so. But the catch-22 that Putin is in is if he sends in, you know, polite people, as was Crimea in 2014, or he sends the army in openly, then it'll look to the rest of the world that what Putin is really interested in is just dominating his neighbors, uh, annexing them, things of that nature. And so then Putin and Russia's foreign policy of trying to overcome all the difficulties posed by the events in Crimea and Ukraine will all be for naught. And the sanctions, which are currently very destructive on the Russian economy, will then basically stay in forever. So Putin is trying to figure out what is the maximum amount that he can do in order to basically stabilize the situation. I'm sure last week 
he was going to he was ready to give all support to Lukashenko. At this point, he's probably trying to figure out how do we get to Tikhanovskaya in Lithuania right. and work with basically the both of them to figure out either power sharing or some sort of slow motion uh, transition that could make this transition less like Ukraine, which is now pretty much anti-Russia, and more like Armenia, in which the the leader, the longtime leader, goes, but basically the country remains within Russia's orbit.